Should you build a PKM system even though your needs may not 100% fit something like Obsidian? Well, I think the answer is definitively yes, and we're going to dig into the details of why in this video. But first, I wanted to share something that I'm giving away completely for free. If you're new on this PKM journey where you're looking at building a system, maybe you're trying out some different tools like Obsidian or Bear or other notes apps like that, this course is for you. It's called PKM Kickstart. It's a five day course that you get in your email inbox, one email a day, that gives you key mindsets, pieces of information, and questions to ask yourself on this journey of starting with personal knowledge management. So if that sounds for you, sign up in the description below. So should you build a PKM system? The answer I think is a resounding yes. There are so many different ways that you can approach personal knowledge management. And honestly, you've probably been doing this to some degree already. It just may not be fleshed out in a tool like Obsidian. Uh, and so let's dig into a little bit first and lay some groundwork. What is PKM? PKM is personal knowledge management. I know myself and other th people in this space tend to throw this acronym out and people are like, what is it? Well, really PKM at its core is a mindset and a process for storing and retrieving information that's relevant to you in a way that makes sense to you. And so for some people, this may look like building out a large fleshed out obsidian or log seek graph where they have a flow and a process for it and they know exactly where everything is at. For others, it may just be using the default apps on your phone like photos and mail to keep track of the information that makes sense to you. We'll get into the details of those specifics in just a moment, but how to define a PKM system in my mind is, okay, so we know what PKM is, the system itself is the apps and tools and processes that are needed to store and retrieve this information. So PKM overall is an approach about how you manage information intentionally. The system is the apps and tools and processes. It's good to start with the good foundation on mindset with PKM and then build into a PKM system. You wanna figure out what your needs are what types of information you're looking to retrieve and store more intentionally. Because it's really easy to get into what's called the collector's fallacy, where you just start grabbing a bunch of information and keeping it uh, because you can. Now, just because you can store something doesn't necessarily mean that you should, because ultimately over time, it just creates digital clutter and I'm sure if you've used Evernote in the past, like I did from like 2008, 2009, I shoved so much stuff into that app uh, that I never ever came back to because I didn't have a process. I didn't have an intention on why I was gathering that information. So PKM is all about the intentional gathering and storing of information so that you can use it at a later point in time. This can be things like health records. It can be things like highlights or quotes from a book, ideas or thoughts that you have, blog posts that you wanna work on, all sorts of different things like that. It can be literally any type of information that you can store in a digital format. Let's get into the different levels of PKM systems now. I've put five here. These are really just arbitrary groupings that I came up with. You may have a different opinion or thought process on this, but to me, the first level of a PKM system is what I would consider the default. When we talk about the default, I'm thinking the Photos app on your phone, the default mail app. Maybe you're using synced tabs and tab groups inside of your browser, or Safari. Maybe you're using the built-in browser uh, article saving feature like Safari has with the reader feature. The default level of a PKM system is really one where you have some intention behind it, 
but it's not intentional enough necessarily to build into a specific system or process for it. You, you know that you're gonna save photos to your photo roll. You know that if you wanna clip an article, you can just click the button inside of Safari and save it into a list to read later. You might not have a specific process to it, but you're using the tools that are available to you by default. I will caveat this by saying that some people who are building more complicated and intentional PKM systems are still using these tools. What I'm trying to hit at here is that it's not the tool, but it's the approach to it. So the second level of a PKM system in my mind is file folder. You're kind of going old school with it where you literally are just shoving stuff in a file folder system on your hard drive. Maybe it's in a cloud solution like Dropbox, but you have an organizational system there, you're putting stuff into it, and you're really mostly focused on saving PDFs and Word documents and other files like that. It's probably where most people live is in between the default and this file folder setup. And so really, I think when a lot of people think PKM, they're thinking levels three, four, and five. But to be honest with you, levels one and two are PKM systems all the same. So when we get into level three, which is a bit more intentional, I call this the notes app level. Think notes apps like Apple Notes, Bear, Drafts, Evernote, Ample Note, and so on. There's so many, uh, Joplin's another one here. In my mind, when you're starting to get into keeping a lot of different types of information, PDFs, notes, ideas, maybe you're doing audio recordings, you're keeping meeting notes, these may need two or more layers of organizational information. So think, instead of just being in a file in a, a file in a folder, think you have it in a folder and then it's also tagged and labeled as something so that all the things that are labeled say PKM or productivity are available from one click regardless of what folder they're in in your system. All of these tools here, uh, save for bear, uh, have both files or folders and tagging opportunities uh, for them. These tools also offer a large number of features to get information into them. And so this is where the intentionality level really amps up. So whereas at the file folder level, you have to be intentional to file stuff where it belongs. But when you get to this level, you have to, there's a level of intentionality of what goes in this, why is it in here? Where am I putting it? How am I organizing it? And ultimately, how am I going to retrieve it later? Where is it most meaningful to me? Level four is linked thought. This is where we start getting into multiple categories for organization. So level two is really like two levels of a folder and a tag. Linked thought is, I wanna make sure that everything that I put into this system is connected together in some meaningful way so that as I explore it and network through the, all of these ideas and thoughts and files that are in here, I can stumble upon things that may be more interesting. Linked thought tools like Obsidian, LogSeq, uh, Heptabase, even Notion to some degree and others are really good for exploring undefined knowledge and connections. So where a notes app like Evernote is really good for this thing belongs here, a link thought PKM tool is really good for this thing belongs somewhere and it could be connected to 50 different things. And so this is where I think that Obsidian and other tools really start to shine is if you're starting to pull lots of varying different ideas together, especially if you're learning something, if you're a student, uh, if you are a researcher, if you're a content creator, um, there's a lot of helpful things that you can do inside of these tools. Um, if you're a creative writer as well, where it's a little bit more difficult to pull it off in a tool like Drafts or Apple Notes. But as a result of that, you have to be all the more intentional to engage with your linked thinking tool. Why? Well, you can't just throw something in there and then just expect it to live somewhere and 
be able to retrieve it meaningfully. Yes, you can build out folders inside of Obsidian. So you do have that capability, but in a tool like LogSeq or Heptabase, you have to have some sort of intentional understanding of why this is here, what it's connected to, and develop those connections over time. So moving on to level number five, Research and Learning Oasis. So this, in my mind, is an interconnected web of tools like Obsidian, maybe Readwise Reader, Zotero, DevonThink, and more that integrate with each other into one system that has everything that you need in it. A lot of people use these tools for academic research or intentional learning. But these tools all together, I think, form what a lot of people think of as a PKM system because it allows you to do different things with different tools because those tools do one thing really well. I don't want to do my reading later stuff inside of Obsidian. I could, but it doesn't do it that well, which is why I use Readwise Reader. I know this is also the same thing why people store their citations in Zotero. Obsidian could do a great job at that, but it's not necessarily the best option. But you don't really get to this level until you start having a solid sense of what are my needs, what problems am I trying to solve, and do I really need all of this complication? Because that's really what it comes down to when building a PKM system. How complicated do you need it to be? You definitely don't want to build more complication into a system, especially when you're starting out, because it's only going to cause you to be more frustrated. And that type of frustration will only cause you to not use the system that you're building. And if you're not using the system, then the value of it dramatically goes down. I hope this really helps you understand the levels of a PKM system and why I think everybody does have some sort of a system like this. We need systems to be able to manage the deluge of digital information that we deal with on a daily basis. But we have to learn to let the stuff that's not relevant pass us by and intentionally capture the stuff that is meaningful to us. And that's where the PKM system and building a more intentional system out can really make sense for you. For more on why I'm using Obsidian this year after using it for almost four years now, click a link to this video here.